Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. We thank Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Uh, we have um, another chance tonight with our dear uh, beloved professor uh Maria Di Katanegara. Uh, last week uh, prof uh, mentioned a uh, few things thing that uh, I remember most is that uh, Islamization of knowledge is a natural project. Of course, when we are progress, <laughs> when we uh, need think uh, to improve, so we take whatever is good to us, whatever is bad, we do we leave it behind. The same with knowledge. If it's good knowledge, we take it. If it's not good knowledge, we try to make it better. Uh, that's the main point that Prof uh, mentioned uh, last time. So our class tonight, as usual, we invite our dear Pak Habib to say a few words, if not introduce, just do in, uh, introduction, and then Prof will speak for 40-45 minutes, and then we'll take question and answer to the chat box. Pak Habib, silakan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ah, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. My highest appreciation to Professor Mulia di Kartanegara for his enlightening and even provoking <laughs> and challenging uh, lecture last week. And today, inshallah, we will have more challenging philosophical and also the spiritual uh, <clears throat> on the epistemology, the Islamic epistemology. We would be happy if uh, Professor uh, Mulyadi would like to share with us also his uh, writings, you know, because he has written more than 30 books and he has edited, yeah, and even make a commentary. And currently he just uh, finished his uh, what do you call, translation from Bahasa Indonesia to English on the work of uh, Professor Nurhalis Majid. And he himself he just written a book of autobiography. Yeah. It's uh, about 2,600 pages. Yeah. And he has written all of his books by handwriting. It's just like Ibn Khaldun. Yeah. Ibn Khaldun. <laughs> has written his all uh, his uh, works uh, on uh, in handwriting and happy that uh, today uh, tonight we have again our professor one of the prominent thinker and also philosopher especially in the epistemology and was one of the initiator of the integration of knowledge in the State Islamic University in Jakarta. And Triple IT have the honor to work with him and also with the faculty of uh, Usuluddin especially, but in the whole University of State Islamic University in the time under Professor Komarotin Hidayat in 2008, uh, we have uh, International seminar where we invited Professor Usman Bakar and Professor Omar Hassan Kasuli, and we have a cooperation for some times in the integration of knowledge. So we we are happy to present our prominent thinker, our philosopher, our writer, Professor Dr. Mulyadi. Kartanegara. Thank you, Professor Mulyadi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Brother Habib Mirzin. Uh, that's introduced me. And uh, inshallah, tonight uh, we'll discuss about science, ilm, and opinion. Uh, but let me first uh, address to all participants in this triple uh, uh, IT online courses on 
Islamic epistemology. To all of you, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa bihi nasta'in wa ala umuri dunya wa din wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidin musaleen sayyidina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Wa nabiya ba'da amma ba'du. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, wherever you are, first of all, we should thanks to God that has given us health and life so we can conduct this online courses on Islamic epistemology. Uh, without which we might be not not be able to to do this. Okay. Uh, the topic for tonight is science, health, and opinion. And if we still have some time, then we continue to our discussion on science, philosophy, and religion. Okay. Uh, the, talking about science is uh, in the present day is very important because science already like, uh, you know, everywhere, you know, we uh, dominated our daily life. And so we should know uh, the reality of science, the scope and also the definitions and what uh, what is the differences between science and island. Also, by implication, we should also differentiate between scientific and ilmia. And we will talk about that later. Okay, uh, I can say basically, science and ilm uh, are the same. You know, in certain aspects. You know, for example, if you see um, the. the uh, the origin of uh, the word science, which is from Latin skira, means to know. And also if you uh, deal with ilm, also ilm coming from uh, verb alima, which means also to know. So basically science and ilm, you can say knowledge. Yeah, the basic verbal or, uh, origin is the, to know. So both science and ilm means knowledge. That is the basic, you know. But then, of course, in the scientific uh, tradition in Islam, Islamic scientific tradition, science uh, gaining uh, certain epistemological meaning, yeah. So science is not the same as any knowledge, yeah. Like science also was contrasted with knowledge. So science is not the same as knowledge. And also ilm, also it's not just any knowledge. It's not just any opinion, but science is actually uh, the systematics and knowledge, and also according to Ibn Hazm, ilm is ma'rifatu shay ala mahuabihi, knowledge of something as it is. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if you study uh, Western epistemology or uh, the theory of knowledge, Science usually is contrasted uh, to knowledge. Science is a systematic um, knowledge of something, okay? And ilm is ma'rifatu ala knowledge of something as it is. So basically in the, 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 the beginning, both science 
and iron is the systematic knowledge. Okay. In the medieval time, the science also in Europe, science was uh, understood as any organized knowledge, any organized knowledge. So science can be anything. You can have a theology as a science, theological science, and you have metaphysical science in the medieval time. Okay. So in the case, this just look like uh, ilm. Ilm also ma'rifat al-shayt, ma'rifat al the knowledge of something as it is. And it's not restricted only to uh, empirical world, to the physical world, but also include non-empirical uh, world or empirical objects. Okay. So also in the medieval times, science also like that. Science was uh, defined as any organized knowledge. So anything, philosophy, theology, mysticism, can be uh, called science in the medieval time. Okay. But due to the influence of empiricism, and later on, uh, due to the influence of positivism, okay. So science has under under uh, undergone a radical change. You know, science become you know like uh, limited only to the empirical or physical objects. Okay. Uh, so. Toward the end of the 19th century, science was understood as systematic knowledge of the physical world. Okay, so the systematic knowledge of the physical world. From this, we understand that science in the West was confined only to the empirical or physical field and also deal only with uh, physical objects. Okay, still systematics and rational, but what make uh, science uh, special is its limits uh, into the physical objects or physical field. Meanwhile, I'm is still the same, stays the same as understood in the medieval time. So I am can be knowledge of uh, physical entities. Like we have al-alum at okay, natural sciences. We have natural sciences, like science in the West, right? But we also have like uh, al-alum al ilahiya okay, metaphysical sciences, okay? And also mathematical sciences. Uh, so what makes different between ion and science is actually its scope. Okay, its scope. While by definition, science and it look look similar, but in terms of scope, it's a different. It's different. Okay. Science confines itself only to the physical entities. Of physical objects, while I can deal with physical and non physical objects. With the al sensible things, and al the intelligible things. Okay? So, uh, <clears throat> what the um, difference between I and science, it is actually in its scope. Okay, well, in the, its nature, its characteristic is still almost the same. You know, like systematic, rational science, uh, rational knowledge that is also science. So let's uh, go to the, uh, the definition of well, yeah. I said, ma'rifatu shay ala ma huwa bihi knowledge of something as it is. So while science was differentiated from knowledge, ma'rifat uh, or I mean 
il was differentiated or contrasted to opinion, ra'yun, ra'yun. But in the Quran, it is contrasted uh, with uh, azan, yeah, uh, like assumption or something like that. Okay. Ma'rifat to shay, ala mahuabi, knowledge of a thing as it is. This is the definition of ilm. So ilm is not just any knowledge, but it is proven, tried, proven uh, with evidence and also uh, argument. Okay. The significance of saying that knowledge is actually knowledge of something, ilm is knowledge of something as it is, this is very important because if our knowledge about something not as it is, so it cannot be said as almia, as a scientific. Okay, uh, that's why you know maybe you, you wonder that uh, Al Biruni in the eleventh uh, century he tried to measure the circumstances of the earth. You know why he did that? Why he should? I mean. Uh, use his energy to measure this circumstances of, of the earth. This is because he want to know uh, exactly what uh, the size of the earth to gain the knowledge of something, in this case, earth as it is. Why the astronomer tried to measure the Jupiter and Saturn and something like that, why? Because they want to achieve the scientific knowledge, meaning uh, knowledge of something as it is. That's why Muslim scientists try to, you know, to do observation, you know, to measure and something like that, in order for them to achieve the uh, the accuracy of the thing that he knows. Okay, so in this case, it's like, like uh, science in the West. You know, uh, Muslim scientists also, you know, uh, they try to uh, do research on astronomy and do experiments in, for example, optics uh, done by Ibn Haysan, for example. Al-Biruni, you know, also used the, this uh, uh, experiment combined with trigonometry method. So if you look at the definition, actually science and ilm has no different. But when you are talking about scope, then science and ilm uh, are different. You know, while science confines itself only to the physical objects, uh, ilm uh, deal with not only physical but also non-physical. Okay. Uh, so in the end, uh, due to the influence of uh, positivism, science confined itself only to the physical entities. And also because of that, <clears throat> they consider a scientific only the science that deal with the physical objects. Okay, so you have to really uh, careful about you know, translating scientific into almia. Yeah. I mean, we can do that, but you have to understand the difference. You know, in Islam, Islamic scientific uh, tradition, you know, almia can be applied to physical and physical objects, but also non-physical objects. Of course, they use different method. So we can also say that mathematical uh, Mathematical knowledge is also a science. You call it mathematical science. Even metaphysical science. We have a metaphysical science. Even metaphysical we can call it science, because in Islam it is alum, and alum means science, but not in the exactly in, in, as the Western understand the words, you know, because scientific in the Western. Uh, understanding scientific should be only confined to uh, physical objects, empirical objects, the observable objects. Other than that, 
then they will not consider as scientific. But uh, in Islam, you know that ilm can be deal with physical objects and non-physical objects. Even we have the al ulumuddinia al ulumunakliya you know, religious science. So religious, religious science also, also, also considered as scientific ilmiya in Islamic uh, parlance. But, you know, if you ask uh, modern scientists, maybe they said that religion is not science in that sense, you know. Some Muslim scholars, such as um, Said Hussein Nasser, Fazul Rahman, um, might use the, uh, the words metaphysical science, okay? Which is not applied in the West, you know, because uh, there's no science of metaphysics. But um, the Professor Nasser used metaphysical science in the sense al uh, ulumul ilahiyah. Okay, so we, we have to differentiate between two epistemology, you know, Islamic epistemology and Western epistemology. They will answer differently to the same question. For example, if you ask uh, Muslim scholars what we can do, what we as a human can know, for example, uh, they will give different answer to those who are, you know, uh, like Western scientists. If we ask Western scientists what we as a human being can know, they said, well, anything that can be observed, observable things, the empirical things. So these two epistemologies should be differentiated. Otherwise we'll be, you know, we'll be confused, right? For example, whether mathematical science are scientific, or even we can uh, call mathematical science. Okay, uh, you know, there, there is a co complicated matters actually, when you are talking about mathematics. You know, I asked um, Professor Muslim from uh, UKM, UGM, uh, when I asked whether, according to Western uh, scientists, mathematics is science or, or not science. And I, I get the answer that according to Western scientists, mathematics is not science. This instruments of science, he said, like, <clears throat> why it is, you know, one discipline can be called scientific if its object is empirical, its object is physical. But if it's not physical, like mathematical objects, then they will not consider as science or scientific. So mathematics is a, you know, uh, have a problem. No. If you say that mathematics is science, but the object is not empirical. Yeah, mathematical, mathematical object is not empirical, not physical. It is non-physical. You know, uh, but why some some people also still say that uh, mathematics is science? Okay, so there's a problem. But if you say that uh, mathematics, which is not uh, whose uh, objects not physical can be called science. So also metaphysics should be called science. Okay, so that is the, the problem. So back to the scope of uh, science and, um, you know, uh, science, as I said, is confined to the physical objects, but island uh, is not confined only to the physical, but also non-physical, non metaphysical. And usually in the Islamic scientific tradition, uh, non-physical science is divided into two, mathematics and metaphysics. Okay. Uh, not like in the West, that mathematics gives us, you know, like a problem because the object is not physical 
But to Muslim scientists, mathematics is no problem. Because we believe not only in the physical objects, but also non-physical objects, including mathematical objects and metaphysical objects. We believe in uh, on mathematical and metaphysical objects, although they are not physical, but we believe in the existence of non-physical. Yeah. So this is what makes different between the Ilm and science. In the West, science only deals with the physical entities, but in Islam, it deals with physical and non-physical objects, including mathematics and metaphysics. Okay, why? Because we believe in not only physical entities, but also uh, non-physical objects. So, if you believe the, of the, in the existence of uh, those objects, so we should have the knowledge of that. If you don't believe in God, why you should bother you to have the science of God, right? That's why for Western people who believe only in a physical uh, world, they said theology is not no use, right? Metaphysics is no use. Why? Because they don't believe in the existence of metaphysical objects. But we Muslim should believe it not only in a physical, but non-physical objects such as God, angel, hereafter, soul, and so on. Okay? Now, because we believe in the existence of uh, non-physical objects, then we should have the science, okay, corresponding to, to the objects. Okay, so if you believe in metaphysical object, then we should uh, create uh, the metaphysical science. You believe in the physical objects, then you should create the physical science. If you believe in the <clears throat> uh, what's called barza or uh, imaginal world, then you have, should have to have the science corresponding to that. In this case, they say mathem uh, meta uh, mathematics, because mathematics is between physical and metaphysical science. Okay, so when you are talking about the difference between science and L, uh, remember that science and L has the similarities, but they differ in its scope. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Now the problem is whether Islam contradicts science or not. Some people say that Islam does not contradict uh, science, <clears throat> but we have to, should be we have uh, to be uh, careful about this. What kind of science? You know, science developed in Islam because they developed by those who believe in God, there is no contradiction between science and religion. But if you are talking about modern science, who doesn't uh, believe in God, who prohibit us to connect uh, natural phenomena with God, for example, there's some, something, uh, you know, you find something contradictory to the religion. So when you say Islam does not uh, oppose or does not contradict science, you should be careful what kind of science, which science. Okay, because <clears throat> if you're talking about uh, secular science, there are many uh, evidence, historical evidence that those who are uh, immersed in science in the West turned out to reject God. They rejected God. They become atheists in the name of science. So you should be careful uh, when you say that Islam does not uh, oppose or does not contradict science. Which kind of science? Science that was developed by Muslim scholars. Of course, it's not contradict, but supported religion. Okay. So for example, even Sina tried to uh, formulate the ontological a proof for God existence. That kind of science is helpful 
beneficial to the religion. Okay, <clears throat> now we, we're trying to go to second uh, theme, which is science, philosophy, and religion. Okay, so I hope by this you understand already what are the similarities and differences between science and health, okay? As for opinion, opinion is just any knowledge, you know, it's not proven knowledge. So that is opinion. Interesting enough, you know, actually, uh, Quran, you know, uh, differentiate between truth, al-haq, and zon. So, uh, Quran said that uh, zon will not do anything good to the truth, right? So while people say that uh, elm uh, should be uh, confronted with uh, uh, opinion, uh, but Quran said that it is opposed to the uh, zone. So that is the important words, zone and hak. Okay, now, when we are talking about science, philosophy, and religion, okay, science here, me, I mean uh, modern science. We are talking about modern science that confines itself only to the physical world. Okay, while philosophy, it can be Western, can be uh, Islam, but I'm talking here about Islamic philosophy, of course, and religion. What are the nature of these three terms? Science. You know, as we understand that science is a systematic knowledge of the physical world, okay? So science confined only to the physical world. So when, when they are talking about the world, they're talking about physical world, physical cosmos, right? Well, if you uh, talk about Islamic philosophy, they can talk not only physical cosmos, but also not metaphysical, non-physical non cosmos, okay? So when you, science is actually, uh, because it concentrated only to the physical uh, world, so they develop the technique and theory that's so nice, I mean, uh, the discovery, scientific, scientific discovery is so amazing, actually. And I, I learned a lot from them, you know. So we know what kind of world that science uh, uh, views, okay? So when you are talking about the, the world, the cosmos, uh, science proposes a physical cosmos, starting from solar system, right? Uh, wherein uh, the, the sun is the, the center of that, but it also talk about the galaxy, okay? Milky Way galaxy, okay? But you understand also from that, from the uh, new physics, that galaxy is not just one. Our galaxy is only one out of billion galaxies. So, you know, science has already discovered uh, so magnificently about the physical, uh, physical universe. They can find nebula, they can find, you know, a cluster of galaxies. And, and from that, we understand how vast, how big is the universe, okay? And we can take benefit from that, you know. But, you know, if you talk about uh, Men, for example, modern science talk about men only as a physical entities. Okay, they don't talk about the soul because they don't believe in a soul. Okay, so when you are talking about men, modern science is talking about men as a physical orbit, and there is no difference between human being and stone, and plant and animal. They said that this is just uh, another physical entities, actually, but with the complexity. You know, human, human 
being is just uh, other, just another physical entities composed of atom, for example. Okay. With the, of course, with the complex uh, structure, but there is no, there's nothing in the non-physical in human being. They deny the existence of the soul. For example, uh, according to behaviorism, soul is actually just the ne neurological functions of the brain. Okay, so there is no such a thing as a soul understood as the uh, immaterial substance, for example, like those uh, Muslim philosophers believe. Okay, so if you're talking about man from the scientific uh, point of view, human being is just biological, physical, chemical entities, right? There is no what you call heart, you know, soul, and something like that. They deny it. Why? Because it's not empirical. Okay. But the man described by science, you know, has no significant position in the universe, right? We are just a point, you know, physically, and a second, temporally. So, you know, we are space, spatial, temporal being. But, you know, if you consider man as only a physical entity, we just, uh, you know, dot, we just a tiny dot, and also a second, you know, compared to, for example, the age of, uh, the age of the universe, for example. So if you consider man in, from the scientific point of view, man has no significant role in the universe. Okay, now we go to philosophy. Uh, science, because they uh, confine itself only to the physical world, the source of knowledge for them is actually sense perception. They believe in sense perception as the, the source of all knowledge. You, they don't care about uh, intellect, they don't care about uh, revelation, they don't care about intuition. They all deny all these uh, sources of knowledge. But if you are talking about philosophy, you know, philosophy <clears throat> based itself on rational reasoning, okay? And focus not on the physical entities, but on ideas. You know, so the difference between science, science based on sense perception and focus on facts, okay? And philosophy, uh, uh, based itself on rational uh, reasoning and concentrate on ideas, okay? So the picture of man, according to uh, philosophy, is much larger, larger than that conceived by uh, science. For example, if you are talking about man in the Islamic philosophy, they consider man as the microcosm. Al alam is right? Meaning that although human being is uh, small, but it's actually contain all the elements of the universe, right? So this is different from the description done by science. Science consider man as just physical, chemical uh, entities, but uh, philosophy, Islamic philosophy, for example, consider man as uh, not only contain the physical entities, but also a physical element, non-physical element, okay? So we believe that human being share with the, uh, the soul of a vegetable soul, right? We also contain a vegetable uh, soul in, in, our, in our body and in our cell. So for example, uh, uh, a plant, can observe food, right? This is called uh, nutri nutritive faculty, okay? Uh, a plant has that nutritive faculty and the faculty of growth and reproductive faculty. So also human being, because human being also contain the, these faculties of uh, vegetable soul, okay? And also we 
Our self also has the uh, animal soul, actually, uh, because uh, animal has given another faculty other than those belong to a plant. For example, the sensation. Animal can see, animal can hear, animal can taste a food, for example. So whatever uh, an animal has, we also human being has, okay? Because we are actually uh, the microcosm. We are the small universe. So all uh, universal, all the uh, world, or uh, all the elements of cosmics, uh, co cosmic element is there in, in our in our self, okay? So, Although human being has a very small size compared to, for example, the earth, but it is really that human being has all element of the universe. Even uh, our philosopher believes that human being also has angelic elements that is intellect. So intellect is actually the angelic elements in the human being. So we have, uh, for example, uh, what's called uh, vegetable elements, we have mineral element, we have animal uh, elements, and also we have uh, angelic elements. Even some Sufi believe that we also have uh, divine elements because God, you know, like uh, blood to the Adam, the Ruh from him. So this is how philosophy see man, not only just a physical entities, but also as the microcosm, something like that, okay? So much uh, higher and noble, nobler than uh, a man that uh, described by science, okay? Uh, okay, you know, now we talk about religion. Religion, of course, is based on revelation and it's talk about uh, dunya and akhirat about the physical world and also non-physical world. And religion has given human being a very uh, lofty position, right? As a khalifa, right? As the representative of God. This is very high position actually that was given by religion. Science will not give that to human being. Although they, they tend to be humanistic, but science will never give the position of Khalifa to human beings, right? But religion does. Religions, when they are talking about human being, human being is a very, you know, noble. Even God said that uh, we actually, Glorify human being. Yeah. You know. Uh, so from the religious point of view, human being has a very lofty uh, position as the representative of God. <clears throat> and if you, you know God, who is God? God is the, the Lord of the all universe, you know. If you are uh, appointed as the representative of a king, we already feel great. And this is not just any king, this is the king of the universe. Not just a king of the certain area on earth, no. This is whole the whole uh, the, the earth and galaxy and everything, you know. And God is given this to human beings. So this is what, what makes different between science and religion concerning about human being. Human being has a very lofty position as the representative of God. Even, you know, if you read the you know, Al-Baqarah, uh, first 30, you know, when God want to uh, make Adam as the Khalifa, as an angel, this, some angels, you know, like protested. Why not us? Why Adam, you know? So God is actually has given us a very high position in the universe. 
even some Sufis said, you know, after quoting uh, uh, Hadith Qudsi, you know, Laulaka wa laulaka ma khulak al-aflak kullaha. If it's not for you, Muhammad, we will not create the universe. So actually, human being become the ultimate purpose of creation. So this is kind of position that has been given by Islam, by religion, to human being, and will not be given by any humanistic or secular uh, sciences or philosophy, right? So I hope by this, uh, we can, I mean, can differentiate between uh, science, philosophy, and religion uh, concerning, for example, the position of human beings. And I see that here, you know, uh, philosophy and religion has uh, give much more, you know, uh, benefits to human being in terms of his position in the universe. You know, so I hope you will get something from uh, my talk to, uh, tonight. And of course, I expect some question from you. And uh, I think I will give back to Prabhupada Sahrat. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have explained about uh, science, man, religion, philosophy, alhamdulillah. Uh, let's go direct to the question. We take from Sister Jamalia first, which is a nice question. How okay. scientific nature, according to Islamic philosophy, can help Muslim to stay safe from COVID-19? <laughs> Do the vaccine critical to save man life in this earth? Wajib for every Muslim to take while knowing the vaccine composition or mixing may totally again the Sharia. Or say the vaccine contains some pork element. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, uh, Islam has already developed some very uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, technique and theories on this. Uh, medicine, pharmacology, you know, they use all the, the energy to find out the cure for any diseases. You know, for example, Arrozi found the differences between uh, chicken fox and missile, and he found also the medicine for that. You know. If you are talking about uh, our common fit tip, you know, uh, even Sina also talk about the disease from all the parts of the body. He first talking about the anatomy of human being and divided into hundred parts. You know? And he specifically talk about the, the disease of that parts of the, of, the, of the body. For example, disease of eyes, the ear and head and something like that. But he also talking about a disease that has no uh, specific place. It can be and anywhere because they're talking about virus, something like that, okay? So uh, as uh, Ibn Sina and Arroz try to find the, the cure, the medicine for the disease, then we are all like, you know? It is necessary for us also to, I mean, to those who are experts in this, to find out the, the medicine for that, the cure for that, right? It is uh, actually what the Fardo Kifaya, right? Uh, so Muslims should also try to find it, you know? Whether or not it should use the, you know, uh, Parks or something like that. That is the you know uh, whether or not we can find them. not just uh, not fork, but also the you know like the other animals that has the same uh, effective efficacy. You know the cure for that. But if there is nothing, but we should uh, use the element of the pigs, for example, then there is a there's uh, rules of darura, right? 
I, I think we can use that, you know. If you cannot find any in any animals other than a pig, for example. Okay. So I think Islam also gives uh, some uh, space for that. You know? But of course, you have to find first the halal uh, animals. Okay. But if there's no way but to use that and it will cure so many people, then you can do it. That is my opinion. Okay. You know, like, for example, if you have no other meat than pork, then you have to eat. Otherwise, you will die, for example. Right? Uh, that is my question. So the necessity for us to search and to, to do research is actually already done by Muslim. Okay. okay? We take quick question from Brother Abu Ali. Go ahead, oh, yeah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Make it short and nice. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you Salah. for moderator. Uh, Prof, how are you? I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. I will comment. I will comment and then I have two questions. Uh, make it quick. Make it quick. Yeah, yeah. Quick, 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 quick. Uh, my comment is it is easy to talk to Professor Mulyadi because he knows everything from many perspectives. From Islam, from knowledge. He is, uh, he is not, he, he knows a lot. But I, I, I have a question like this, Prof. What does knowledge of science talk about uh, about Al-Quran? And then, what does Al-Quran talk about science? Uh, if from Promulyadi, it is easy. I, I, I'm sure uh, Mr. Mujadi's answers, we agree. But it is difficult. I have a professor from London. He doesn't believe in God. And then it is difficult to talk to, talk about knowledge. And then he don't he doesn't understand Al Quran. He doesn't say, he doesn't understand knowledge. That's my question, bro. Okay. It, Let me answer this, right? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a lot of questions, but the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You know the if you want me to answer philosophically, right? So first we have to talk about the possibility of revelation, right? Otherwise, you know, if it's not possible, then the Quran is not possible also, right? So we have to talk about the possibility of revelation. Okay. In Islam, we have the source of knowledge, not only uh, sense perception, not only senses, but we have also intellect and we have also hearts or intuition, right? And if you're talking about intellect, intellect knows that, uh, Senses cannot, you know, uh, cannot perceive. For example, uh, intellect can know God, uh, but sci uh, eyes, you know, your your senses cannot perceive God, right? But also above the, the intellect, we still have hearts or intuition, kalbun, or fuad, something like that. And we have to understand what the hearts will do. Or what the, you know, like the benefit and the capability of heart in terms of receiving knowledge. So according to many, many uh, Sufis, many mystics, not only in Islam but also uh, Hindu, and they say that hearts can receive directly from God the knowledge. This is what's called ilmu laduni. Uh, so direct knowledge by God through your hearts. Okay, it is explaining in the Quran actually uh, that heart can receive directly from God, and what it happened, it called uh, mukashafa, unveiling, the revealing, and that's the revelation coming from. But you know there is ilham, but also there is a revelation. Ilham is for non uh, prophets, but revelation only given to the prophets. But the possibility is there that uh, according to many experts, to many mystics, to many Sufis, that heart can receive a guidance from God, as it is also explained in the Quran. Okay, so when when philosophically possible for the for God to intervene to give direct to the heart, so revelation is is a possible. But the problem with the West 
they rejected intuition and heart as the source of knowledge. That is the problem. So they will not believe in revelation. But if we believe in the uh, you know, heart as the source of knowledge, and this is through heart that God gives in inspiration and also uh, send down the revelation. So according to Muslim philosopher, a revelation is, uh, is a possible, it's a possible thing. You know, and there is uh, many uh, witness, of course, you know, for example, uh, the works of Jalaluddin Rumi, for example, the works of Ibn Arabi, they said that I received something from God, right? Even, even Arabi said that uh, Al-Futuhatul Makiya is actually dictated by God, right? So this is uh, not something impossible in Islamic scientific tradition. So if uh, heart, your human heart uh, has a capability of receiving directly from God, of course, through uh, what's called tazkiyat nafs, you know, cleansing your heart so it's so pure, so it's like uh, glasses that can receive the sun ray directly to your room, right? Uh, so if your heart is so pure, then it is possible for God to give revelation. And even if it's possible, then yeah, we can say that uh, Quran is uh, real from God, a book from God, because philosophically it is possible. Of course, philosophers are talking about lesser uh, prophecy and greater prophecy, okay? Uh, so maybe lesser from Sufi, for Sufi, and the greater from the prophet, but uh, they are talking about the possibility. You know, uh, Fazil Rahman talked about the, of, all this uh, theory of prophecy uh, in his book, you know, prophecy in Islam. So many philosophers, you know, talking about the possibility of revelation. So once you have confirmed the possibility of the revelation, so revelation can be true. Okay. Thank you. Now, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, our time is up. Can you summarize, Prof? I will talk tonight. We still have many questions on the chat box. I'll call it to you. Okay. <laughs> Okay, to summarize, um, it is very important for us to understand the similarities and differences of science and uh, iron. Yeah, because these days, people are still confused. Should scientific is translated uh, into ilmiya, whether ilmiya is exactly the same as scientific. And I said, yes, you can, but uh, you cannot uh, confine ilmia only to the physical entities. You can say that ilmia also to metaphysical or mathematical sciences. That's still ilmia because ilmu can cover not only physical and but also non-physical entities. Okay, so when uh, Muslim scholars talking about metaphysical science, it is in the sense of olum, not in the sense of science because science confine only to the physical. Okay. About the science, science um, philosophy, and religion, actually, when you are talking about science uh, regarding human being, for example, you know, human being in the scientific view has no, no place, has no significant position in, in this universe. You know, human being only a tiny things, you know, if you consider only as a physical entity, human being is a tiny thing. You know, if the the if the if the Earth cannot be seen from the the ends of the our galaxy, how about human being, right? Human being has no place, and also in terms of time, one hundred years nothing compared to, for example, a billion you know four four billion uh, the age of the sun, for example. So if you uh, look at the human being only from the scientific view, human being has no place, actually. Okay, But if we are talking about uh, human being from philosophical and religious point of view, then suddenly human being has a lofty position as the Khalifa, for example, uh, as the uh, Insan Kamil, for example, as the uh, uh, microcosm, for example. These are are the, the significance of uh, studying 
and learning philosophy and religion because it will give the loftier position to human being and of course the greater uh, role that human being can play in this universe that is my uh, summary movie thank you yeah thank you thank you so much prof we'll see you next week inshallah same time, yeah. inshallah, same, uh, same, time, same day inshallah thank you everyone Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.